At this point, you should have Ruby installed and working. Now I'm going to be using IRB a lot in this tutorial. IRB is useful because it provides you instant feedback. You can try things out, see what they do. I think that's a useful way to learn the language. So what can you do with it? Well, so for starters, you can use it as a calculator. So here's some examples. 5 plus 3 is 8. Simple enough. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 divided by 8 is 5, so we can do basic arithmetic. And that's just integers, those are whole numbers, but we can also do floating point math. Floating point, of course, just means that it's a number with a decimal point. So this is great, you can use it as a calculator, but if that's all you could do with it, it would be very useful. Let's look at some other things it can do. 8 greater than 5, it says true. Yes, 8 is greater than 5. 8 greater than 12, it says false. So greater than is not arithmetic, this is now doing a comparison. True and false are what are known as Boolean values. Those are the only two values that that data type has. So we've seen integers, we've seen floating point numbers, and we've seen Booleans. These are different types of data that Ruby understands, but there are some others. Remember when we did hello world, hello world is not a number and it's not a boolean, it's a string. A string is a sequence of symbols, in this case letters, but it can also include numbers. Like that. Now if I do 12 monkeys times 12, it repeats the string 12 times. What's happening here? This multiplication by 12 means something different for a string than it does when we multiplied 5 by 8 up above. What's going on here is that Ruby is an object-oriented language. That means that everything in Ruby is an object. 5 is an object, 8 is an object, hello world, the string is an object, true and false are objects. An object has a type, in this case integer, floating point, boolean, string. The type determines how it responds to something like multiply yourself by 12. If it's a number, 6 times 12, you get another number, 72, and if it's a string, like 12 monkeys, you get 12 repetitions of the string. Here's another data type. 3 with two dots and a 6 is a range, 3 to 6. This is another data type. And this lets you do some other things. Using square brackets after the string is a way of saying, I want to take a substring. Give me the third through the sixth characters. Now if you count, you'll see that this space at the beginning is actually the fourth character. But that's because Ruby, like many programming languages, actually counts from zero. So what you're getting is characters four through seven. And there's the answer there, a space THI. So these are some examples of data types, but there are actually many, many more. If we, list, we saw earlier, if you look at the Ruby documentation, there's this core reference. It lists all of these different types. They're known as classes. And here's string. A string object holds and manipulates an arbitrary sequence of bytes, typically representing characters. So you can read about strings. You can read about all the different things you can do. For example, the square brackets are what's known as a slice. A range is, is shown here. A string with a range gives you a new string, which is a portion of the original string. So these are all things that you can do with a string. Now there's probably much too, much, too much information here to go through it all right now, but the, the upshot is that you don't need most of this right away. You come back to this reference when there's something specific that you want to find out about.